the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for the spirit of revelation. We thank you because indeed you will do great and mighty things in the midst of your people this morning. Our hearts are open to hear and to receive. We declare in the name of Jesus that your word will profit us evidently. And as you do this, we vow that Jesus as always will remain glorified even in this beautiful assembly. Strengthen the hands of the leaders. Grant them grace. Let this church step into new dimensions. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. While standing, I want you to help me truly appreciate Pastor Abu Jibril and his dear wife. Thank you. Pastor, I sincerely love you and your wife. Thank you. Thank you for the invite. And... Um, this is such a beautiful and a very, very happy church. Very beautiful and very happy church. I was also very touched when I came in and I saw so many people outside um, the overflows. I don't know how many overflows I saw. I saw at least two or so, about four. Let's honor those who are outside with a big, 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 big God bless you. One thing for sure is that it doesn't matter where you are seated, provided your faith can be connected to the word of God, there is no limit to what God will do. Hallelujah. Can we pray one prayer? Father, give me an encounter. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Please go ahead and pray. Pray from the depth of your heart. Change my life, oh God. Whatever you want to say, Lord, you can say through me. Whatever you want to do, Lord, you can do through me. Whoever you want to bless, Lord, you can bless through me. Whoever you want to change, Lord, you can change through me. Whoever you want to live, Whatever you want to say, Lord, you can say. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, truly let everyone here have their expectations surpassed by far. I'm praying, oh God, for this church that you will measure a thousand cubits and move this assembly to another dimension of grace 
in jesus name we pray please be seated god bless you i love the word of god because of its power and the ability to transform and the ability to make men become you can become what the word of god says you will become and within the time we have may i please request inside and all the overflows to be very intentional like your pastor said and pay attention to the ministry of the word the things you are about to hear are not opinions the things you are about to hear are not they are not um, suggestions they are truths that are backed up with the integrity of god and if you pay attention to these truths i guarantee you by the authority of scripture that no power in existence will be able to restrain you from expanding the borders of your destiny in the name of jesus christ deuteronomy chapter 19 we'll start on this note deuteronomy 19 from verse 8 and 9 i'm teaching this morning on the price for enlargement the price for enlargement hmm. may that be someone's testimony Amen. the price for enlargement deuteronomy 19 we'll read from verse 8 and 9 and if the lord thy god enlarge thy coast as he had sworn unto thy fathers and give thee all the land which he promised to give unto thy fathers verse 9 he says if thou shalt keep these commandments to do them which i command thee this day to love the lord thy god and to walk ever in his ways then shall thou add three cities more unto thee beside these three that you can walk in keeping with his commandments and i will add beside what you already have hallelujah the bible very clearly lets us know that it is god's desire for the believer in christ to experience ever increasing dimensions of results in our christian experience stagnation retrogression is not in the character of god proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18 this is a church that has such profound honor for scripture and i'm very very every time i teach in an assembly that has regard for scripture i am motivated because there is no other way to experience the power of god except by communicating the truths that are contained in scripture you may have heard me teach that the word of god defines the boundary of his commitment to the believer god as mighty as he is has limited his operation to the believer to the confines of scripture hallelujah proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18 but the path of the just is that in your bible is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day say more and more more and more so enlargement is our heritage in christ psalms 115 and verse 14 i want to give you a few scriptures it says the lord shall increase you more and more you and your children shout amen, amen. the lord shall increase you more and more and that that increase will not only stop at you you and your children your children here does not just mean your biological children everything that comes out of you is your child your idea your business he says the lord shall increase you more and more you and your children Amen. isaiah chapter 54 popular scripture the first three verses isaiah 54 1 and 3 this is a prophetic word already for someone sing O barren thou that didst not bear break forth into singing and cry aloud 
thou that didst not travail with child for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife saith the lord verse 2 can you read together if you can see it ready one to read enlarge the place of thy tent and let them stretch forth the cutting of thy habitation spare not lengthen thy cord and strengthen thy stake why verse 3 for thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left and thy seed shall inherit the gentiles and the, the desolate cities to be inhabited say amen. amen that you will break forth that means he's saying build capacity something is coming that will break you forth on the left and on the right one more scripture job chapter 8 from verse 7 though thy beginning was small is god speaking to someone the word though means in spite of the fact it was once a fact but just because it was a fact yesterday does not mean it must remain a fact tomorrow though thy beginning was small yet thy latter end should greatly increase hold on it didn't say shall greatly increase it says should it depends on you this is god's idea for you though your beginning was small god's idea is that your latter end should greatly increase whether it happens or not depends on you but this is god's position as far as your future is concerned thy latter end should greatly increase can i add one more scripture this one is a prophecy i will only give you this scripture based on the fact that if you read it we will pray for one minute and receive this scripture into our spirit genesis 17 verse 6 hmm. are you ready to read one to read and i will make thee exceeding fruitful and i will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of thee can you turn it into a prayer in one minute lord i believe this i receive it into my spirit i conceive it as a reality i am exceedingly fruitful exceedingly fruitful exceedingly fruitful nations nations it's one thing to become a nation but it's another thing for nations to come out of you hallelujah praise the name of the lord please be seated i found this scripture many years ago and it changed my life it is already a measure of greatness to be a nation when they checked the womb of her that was with child they said two nations were in you how can nations be in a person that is another dimension of greatness you can be as great as a nation but when nations come out of you what are you what is the name of the mother that births nations? And kings shall come out of you. That was when I covenanted with God that I will never pastor a people who are only spiritually enlightened. I believe in the power of influence. He says nations shall come out of you and kings shall come out of you. So we're establishing the fact that it is our heritage in Christ to experience ever increasing growth. Listen, in God's dealing with men, we should never plateau at any dimension, whether in ministry, in business, in whatever endeavor, we should continually evolve to greater versions of ourselves and our results should know no end. This is God's destiny for us. Now write this down please what does it mean to enlarge let me do a definition then we'll begin to teach on the principles write this down to enlarge means to increase in size to enlarge i hope those outside can hear me those outside if they can hear me i hope i wish that they shout jesus as loud as they can praise god hallelujah thank you all right, so to enlarge means to increase in size. Are you writing? To enlarge means to increase in volume. To enlarge means to increase in extent. 
when we talk about enlargement it involves increasing in size increasing in volume increasing in extent it also means increasing in scope so generally speaking the idea of enlargement involves increase in the various dimensions of your life and i told us that enlargement and increase is god's will for us in christ never allow anyone preach you to downplay enlargement in fact please look up psychologically speaking there are six indices that measure fulfillment a man is fulfilled to the degree to which these things happen in his life i'll just give you one one of them is growth growth one of the indices that measure fulfillment is growth that means you find fulfillment to the degree to which you perceive that you are growing and making progress there are departments in hospitals that are set up to deal with people who are utterly frustrated because of the the psychological breakdown of stagnation when people perceive they are not moving it affects them this is why we take note of things like anniversaries and birthdays and special moments because they represent milestones ending one season and beginning another we acknowledge them and we celebrate them with intention is that true so God is a God of increase but you see for every blessing in the kingdom listen carefully for every blessing and every dimension that we desire to attain unto in the kingdom there are always conditions that are tied to it this for me i believe is the part of the gospel that most well-meaning believers have not understood the fact that in dealings in the dealings of god with men there are two dimensions to it. Let me explain it quickly. There is what is called the prophetic dimension of God's dealings with people. And then there is what is called the experiential manifestation of God's intent for them. That means when God deals with men, you will see that he speaks as though the things have been done already. It is in his character to call things that be not as though they were and because he's speaking from the standpoint of his realm when God is speaking to you it does not look like there is anything to be done it is his nature but then translating those spiritual realities to become experience in your life there are principles that midwife prophecy and manifestation and if you do not understand these principles you may know you may be aware of the things that should be but it may never be captured in your experience and sadly even in your lifetime are we together so we have well-meaning believers who want to excel spiritually we have well-meaning pastors who want to increase enlarge we have well-meaning businessmen who want to scale their influence their productivity we have people who want to be wealthy and blessed we have people who want to experience all kinds of liftings and all of these possibilities are obtained in scripture but many people are unable to attain it and the simple reason is that most believers they are aware of god what god desires for them but they are not aware of what it takes what it takes my assignment is to hand to you this morning what it takes not just you already know we just looked at a few scriptures so we all agree that enlargement and increase is a heritage in Christ but can I tell you not knowing and engaging these principles will only multiply frustrations so I plead with you to pay attention as I teach you some of these principles by the privilege of God's grace. I submit to you with every sense of humility that I know what I'm talking about. You are not hearing cunningly devised fables. You are hearing truths that are not opinions. They are backed up by the integrity of God. And if you pay attention to what I'm sharing with you, 
you will only return to hug and greet and cry over your pastor and say thank you for the sacrifice of putting this meeting together wishing for a great life is a total waste of time total waste of time comforting yourself with all kinds of african proverbs one day go better those things are just sociologically comforting but i guarantee you by the integrity of god time does not change anything time only reveals it is understanding and obedience understanding and obedience for some of you you probably might be frustrated at this point in your Christian experience because you are hoping to have attained unto certain results and you see let me tell you this please look up it is important to learn these principles and to learn them fast because you see destiny is measured in time that means you don't always have the time for everything are we together now yes it is important he says satisfy me early with your mercy timing is important to actualizing and maximizing destiny it is possible to learn something so powerful too late the advantage of knowledge is not just that it is communicated the advantage of knowledge is that it is communicated on time understood on time engaged on time and the benefits enjoyed on time are you ready now I have studied from scripture and I've learned from the life of people who by the grace of God have attained unto uncommon results as far as ever increasing enlargement ever increasing results and this it matters in every area of your life this is not just for preachers this is for everyone because we all desire progress and enlargement listen as you hear the truths that i'm sharing with you i want you prophetically in your mind to wave your current level goodbye because these principles will force it to wave you back and you will know that i have left this level and this dimension never to return again in the name of jesus christ there is a price let's examine from scripture price number one are we ready the first price it takes to not only break new grounds to enlarge to virgin frontiers of your life and destiny is the price of correct perception the first price the price of correct perception the price of correct perception underline the word correct please the price of correct perception please look up it matters what you know about god it matters what you know about satan it matters what you know about failure it matters what you know about success it matters what you know about men it matters what you know about result perception is everything you can be a well-intentioned person and yet perceive things wrongly and you will evolve to reflect your perception Jeremiah chapter 1 from verse 11 and 12 this was a discussion between the young boy who would later become a mighty prophet and the God of heaven moreover the word of the Lord came unto me, Jeremiah 1, 11 and 12, saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? I have spoken to you that it is in your destiny from your, the womb of your mother to ordain you to be a prophet to the nations. You began to complain about your age. I am a child. He says, say not, you are a child. Wherever I send you to, you shall go and everything i tell you to say you will say moreover the word of the lord came jeremiah what seest thou he said i see the rod of an almond tree verse 12 he said thou hast well seen 
other version said thou has seen correctly amplified in fact you see that it says that you have seen you have well seen that means you can see wrongly for i will hasten that which you have seen not just my word that i said the one you have seen that is the one i will hasten to perform thou has seen correctly it means you can see wrong your perception is a capture of your mindset your viewpoint your perspectives how you interpret life the lens from which you look at things your perception is very powerful are we learning in genesis chapter 13 let's look at 14 to 17 genesis chapter 13 very quickly from verse 14 and the lord said unto abram after that lot had separated from him lift up now thy eyes look at this this is powerful i can spend all day preaching about this lift up now thy eyes and look from the place where you are your legs may not be able to move but your eyes can move you may not have a visa to travel around but your mind can move it says from where you are forget about where you need to be from where you are lift up your eyes look northwards southwards eastwards westward that's how powerful your perceptions are that you can be in one place and yet your perception can look so far next verse for all the land which thou seest say seest not the one you want the one you see that is the one I will give to you and your seed. There is more than you see, but the one your eye sees is the one I'm committed to giving you. All the land which thou seest. Hallelujah. Most of you here may have come across, maybe you did fine arts, maybe in secondary school or at least some kind of limited arts. Is that true? And there's something that they taught us in fine arts called perspective. Remember? That means this man who is capturing this, there are several lovely cameras in this, this hall. And all of them are attempting to capture something. Do you know that if this is the only camera we depend on, there are things we will not see. But it does not mean they are not there. It is the limitation of the angle from which that camera is standing from you will have to depend on another viewpoint to see if i ask you draw everything you are seeing now in your mind you will not believe there are four overflows of over two thousand people outside here right now because your eyes could not see it are we together so if god tells you for instance let's assume i am god in this example and i tell you i will bless you this morning to the number of people who came for this service chances are that you will interpret my blessings based on all those who are in this auditorium alone because that is all you can see whereas in god's mind he meant everyone including those connecting online listen to me you will never rise above the accuracy of your perception you will never rise above the accuracy of your perception for all the land which thou seest i will give to you in numbers chapter 13 let's hurry up numbers chapter 13 we read from verse 1 the bible lets us know that moses was sending those we call the spies are we together yes that there were 12 of them and the lord spoke unto moses saying uh-huh send thou men that they may search the land of canaan which i give unto the children of israel of every tribe their fathers shall ye send a man everyone a ruler among them we're reading to verse 3 and moses by the commandment of the lord sent them from the wilderness of paran all those men they were heads of the children of israel for sake of time quickly jump to verse 33 same numbers 13 verse 33 now look please 
they returned back and they were giving their different reports how many of you know that all of them went to the same place number two all of them saw the same thing now hear the assessment and there we saw the giants the son of anak which come of the giants and we were in whose eyes did was it in god's eyes was it even in satan's eyes it was in whose eyes we saw based on what we used we saw that we were grasshoppers and so we were in our own eyes oh. and so we were in their sight can you imagine this you return with a report and then you go and say it is true there are cucumbers there are all kind that land is flowing with milk and honey for sure however the people we saw based on what we saw you didn't verify whether the people were even afraid of you he said in our own eyes we were like grasshoppers there are many sincere believers who want to rise but we have used several kinds of vistas and lenses lenses that came from culture lenses that came from our past lenses that came from the inaccurate communication of scripture and they have created perceptions perceptions limiting perceptions there are people satan does not have to fight their mindset is already in partnership with him it's a waste for him to invest his energy fighting them even if you were not there they will still fail because the failure is not really from him the failure is from their perceptions hear me god is speaking to you right now i know you came from a background where no one has risen but in in light of all you have been hearing what sees thou if you see exactly what your father saw you will have exactly his exact result it's not an insult it's the truth can i tell you this where you are now is what you saw yesterday where you will be tomorrow hear me now hear me now where you are now is not what you are seeing now where you are now is the report card of what you saw yesterday are you getting me now tomorrow will tell us what you are seeing now so your pastor by the spirit is seeing another dimension of growth another dimension of kingdom assignment and this is why he's stretching himself and stretching the church to tell them that look we have come past around this mountain long enough it's time to move to another dimension i pray that you align your perception to understand that where you are is not god's best for you in the name of jesus christ can i tell you this you know your perceptions are adjusting correctly when you start killing excuses in your life the moment you garrison yourself with excuses is it there is excuses are verification systems that you are not interested in growing the moment you surround your life with excuses it is proof that you don't intend to grow apostle i lost my father and my mother i understand i'm not inhuman but if you continue to massage limitation in your life using that excuse you may remain small forever apostle i used to have a good business and the pandemic destroyed everything i understand there is a word in scripture that always blesses me very simple word is the word again again is a powerful word it means hope in spite of what happened again and adam knew his wife again 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 is a is the clearest description of hope again means it once happened we don't want to know what happened again means a possibility exists to reproduce that same result apostle i did business and i failed again another word nevertheless these are words that we just browse through 
until the Holy Ghost opens your eyes. Nevertheless means notwithstanding, in spite of. Master, we have toiled all night. Nevertheless. Nevertheless. Someone you need to prophesy to yourself. Nevertheless. Nevertheless. In spite of everything that has happened, I am adjusting my perception. I had to trek my way to church, but nevertheless, nevertheless, the word of the Lord stands sure over my life. I will walk on my perception. I may not have a job right now in the name of Jesus. The, the prophetic grace, the apostolic grace, that pastoral grace may not be speaking now, but nevertheless, I decree and I declare the prize of correct perception hallelujah now please look up i hope god is speaking to us there are many of us here who are in building we're planners um architects look at the intelligence of an architect he will sit down and see a land that is not even flat the contour is not even stable there are trees maybe there's all kinds of debt and he stands there and he's seen something else he brings a little piece of paper I believe that before if you got if you can find the architect that built this structure once upon a time probably this place was a place of rubbles and death and yet someone stood and didn't see death and he began to design it there will be a hall here you see when you hear architects talk they look like madmen and you are right until the result changes the narrative so this is it this is how my destiny will be this is how i'll buy a car for my father i'll build a house this is how i will be sending a million dollars for the gospel and while you are talking you look absolutely stupid the price of correct perception make up your mind that you are going to culture your mindset in a way that it only sees things and perceives things that are consistent to and with what the word says be careful with culture be careful with the status quo these things are wonderful but they can educate you into believing a lie for instance they say you cannot rise because of your skin color for instance they say you cannot be great because of gender for instance they say you have come from a family where no one has risen what gives you the audacity to believe you will rise the price of accurate correct perception let me hurry up are you ready for the second price number two hmm. the price of light the second price that you will need if you actually want to rise is the price of light knowledge high level spiritual illumination this is a kingdom where ignorance will always recycle pain in your life this is a kingdom where we rise through knowledge not just any kind of knowledge accurate spiritual knowledge hosea chapter 4 and verse 6 a few scriptures my people popular scripture are destroyed for the lack of knowledge for the lack of knowledge they are my people and yet they will be destroyed for the lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge i will also reject thee that thou shalt be no priest unto me psalms 45 and verse 4 it says and in thy majesty ride prosperously because of truth ride prosperously because of truth you can you can ride with joy and audacity and confidence even into virgin dimensions because the chariot that carries you is truth and you can do nothing against the truth but for the truth ride prosperously majestically with honor and nobility because that which carries you 
is truth. Are we together? There are two reasons, Luke chapter 19. There are two reasons why Jesus wept in the Bible as recorded in scripture. The first reason why he wept, it was in John chapter 11 when you read from verse 35. Jesus wept because he heard that Lazarus had died. And when he wept, they said, oh, how he loved him. So he wept because he had lost Lazarus. The second reason why Jesus wept is found in Luke chapter 19 from verse 41. Luke 19, 41. Can we read it together? It's projected. We'll read 41 and 42. Ready? Please read. And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it. Why did he weep? Verse 42. Saying, if thou hast known, even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto your peace, but they are now hid from your eyes. Jesus wept when he looked over Jerusalem. He saw the gross level of darkness and ignorance, the bankruptcy of spiritual illumination, and he brought tears to his eyes. He says, if you had known the things that make for your peace, but now they are hidden from you. And let me tell you this. When you are breaking new grounds or enlarging, usually you are not starting. So there is a kind of knowledge you should have had that brought you that far. Is that true? Now let me tell you this. Exhaustion is proof that you have limited the validity of the knowledge you had before arriving there has finished. Exhaustion is a letter from your future to you that I am there, but this level of knowledge you have will not take you past that realm. The moment you find out that you plateau in business, in life, in ministry, especially if you've had some kind of result, it means your knowledge is limited. Dearly beloved, I hope Every you level in life requires message. a certain Do not keep the kind of knowledge yourself. to scale to as that many level. as you can I've to help them the learn. Check our home page for more of our messages. Ministry, Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. I, like it. I've had the honor of talking See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Bashka na kata branda kete kotos, kete branda kata pa kotos koto preke te kene kata. The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline. If any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. Please look up. In in the academia we have grades is that true f e or p c b and a i think that those are the general grades when somebody gets f i think p starts from 40 in most uh, institutions you can get 38 38 is not the same thing as zero yet zero and 38 is still f are we together do we agree that zero and 38 is still now if they ask you to stand according to how you failed the person who got zero will be behind so you are in front of someone yet if they say all those who got f stand here you will be in the same category so just because there is someone behind you does not mean you have passed and they comparing themselves with themselves are not wise so if the person who scored zero the person who scored 12 the person who scored 21 and the person who scored 38 are there arguing about who is greater and some intelligent people who is greater they all are still there they, they are still under f high level spiritual illumination be careful when you find consolation in the fact that at least someone is behind me the question is what is your grade i can sing better than this i can preach better than this at least i have hundred thousand i know if you are just saying that to thank god 
for his mercies that's fine but you are saying that to endorse mediocrity this is why africa still remains the way it is we celebrate nothing we clap over nothing i apologize i'm here to stretch you you called it you invited me here to come and are we together listen can i tell you this champions are so determined to rise they don't even know when they've crossed the finish line because their eyes are never on the finish line they they would have crossed the finish line and they are not even aware they are too distracted to be stopped to say look you finished i didn't even realize i finished five years ago because i'm still aiming at something higher this one thing i do forgetting the things that are behind i press You're a man of God here. Yes, study like you've not started. You're a businessman here. Yeah, do business like you've not started. Don't let 1 million, 10 million, 100 million deceive you. Is that all you need in your life? Don't go back home and say, I'm better than the rest. Remember my teaching. Don't forget this teaching on 0 and 39. You can use it to counsel pride out of people. Many years ago, I schooled in a region where we used to do debates, this thing called debates. You remember? Quiz and debates. And relative to the schools around us, they were not really very smart. It was a very simple area. And so if they heard that we were coming, it was like terrorists were arriving until the day we went to face another school we were champions within i mean whether you rehearse or not because the other school can literally get zero in the whole quiz they can answer they can fail all the questions so even if you answer only three you will still go back with the price we kept believing we were good until now we went to do a state a statewide quiz and debate oh my god we returned back to that school like we're returning from a funeral. I remember students, you would see somebody who is 14th position and yet his average is 80.5. There are very good schools like that. You see somebody with 95% yet his position is 11th in class. 95%. And you will see another school, somebody having 41 position, 40, I mean, um, uh, 41, maybe 50, and his third position. I'm not concerned about your score. What is your grade? That level. I press. I'm better than my family members. Thank God, I press. I'm better than everybody around me by whatever standard I press. The day His Majesty claps for you, then you know you have done well. Until then, you set your eyes. You see, refuse to be distracted. It's good to pat yourself at the back when God grants you grace, but be careful. You can over pat yourself and it slows down your pace and you don't even move forward again. Is God speaking to someone? High level spiritual illumination. You are a businessman. Stop running around. Go and sit down. Get books and study. Go and study. You are in ministry. You are a man of God. Don't say there are so many invitations. Doors of ministry is opening. Who is inviting you? You see, until you get to the palace, don't trust any other place you are in. Only the palace can give you the reward that actually enthrones you like royalty. I have a restaurant, Apostle. Until you serve kings, don't stop. Get the knowledge. I, I, am, I am a tailor. Who are, you, who are you dressing? Until you dress kings, don't stop. Are we together? Stretch yourself. Stop celebrating mediocrity pat yourself at the back don't be too hard on yourself but i'm telling you don't be afraid of stretching yourself you will not die say knowledge, knowledge. say light. light quickly number three 
Are we learning something? It's good to come to church. The third price it takes for enlargement is the price of wisdom. Wisdom. What is wisdom? I gave it a definition here and I want you to listen to the definition. Wisdom is the ability to generate life applicable solutions from the truths of scripture. The ability to generate life applicable solutions from the truth of scripture. That is the definition of wisdom. The ability to generate life applicable solutions from the wisdom, from the truth of scripture. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, please, and verse 15. Let's hurry up for sake of time. Ecclesiastes 10, 15. Let's read it so you don't say I'm insulting you. You have to read it. Ready? One to read. The labor of the foolish, where yet how many? Every one of them, because he knoweth not how to go to the city. Not because there is no city. When my people were driving me here, I told them, I said, Do you know the place? They said, Yes. Do you know why? Because having that wisdom redeems time. The Bible says the labor of the fool. So the fool here is not lazy. But the labor will still weary him because he does not, he's not walking in wisdom. Wisdom is a time redemption strategy. Wisdom can reduce years of wastage in your life. Are we learning? Proverbs 24 and verse 3, very popular scripture. By wisdom, O oh God, heaven's gates open up. With understanding, you order the seas. Creating day and night, turning darkness into light. Arranging the stars to your place. Through wisdom is a house built. Through wisdom. A house there does not just mean a house physically. Amplified gives it expression. A business, a family, a venture, whatever it is, it is built. Anytime you want to build anything to last, the architect you should employ is wisdom. Wisdom has proven to be a superior architect. If he builds for you, that building will stand. Let wisdom build your ministry. Let wisdom build your business. Let wisdom build your family. Let wisdom build your finances. And you can be sure the architecture of wisdom is superior by every standard. Wisdom. Luke chapter 14. I found this scripture and it really, really blessed me. Luke chapter 14 <laughs> from verse 30. Sometimes you wonder why some things, how they made their way to the Bible. Now, Jesus was teaching here and he was teaching about counting a cost, the cost dimension, right? He gave one illustration and I'm interested in the second half of the illustration saying, this man began to build now and was not able to finish it. A man that did not count the cost, 31. Or what king going to make war against another king seated not down first and consulted whether he is able to with 10,000 men to meet him that come against him with 20,000 say wisdom and if he finds out 32 that he is not able to come against him what will he do while the other is yet a great way off, he sended an ambassage and desired conditions of peace. This guy wants to go and fight. But the Bible says, if this guy does not use wisdom, <coughs> excuse me, they will kill him in a way as though he has never fought. He said, calculate. If you know that the enemy coming is bigger send envoys of peace are we together that's what Esau did do you remember Jacob and Esau Jacob and Esau now was it Jacob or Esau who did it now Jacob sent envoys 
to try to make peace so that all this trouble would not be there there are many people who have zeal but no wisdom here he's talking about going to fight he's saying be, beware don't just say god is with me choose your battle with intelligence there are adversaries you cannot fight did you hear what i said please look up let me tell you there are human beings you cannot fight on earth if god wants you to circumvent them he grants you favor with them but as for casting them forget it you will not cast them they are called gatekeepers they are the kind of people that the bible says when a man's ways pleases the lord he make it his and there are other enemies he kills there are others he will make them have peace with you so that you will pass that door not everybody is killable there are people who are gatekeepers this is why many believers don't get promotion because they look at a man who is a ceo of a company you know that this man does not love god but the grandmother was already an intercessor and god covenanted with her that to your fourth generation nobody will bring you down so even though that man is a it's a traditional worshiper that covenant the mother had is still speaking you will come with your zeal from church and insult him and say i know who i am and the covenant fights you to your knees listen to what i'm teaching you and learn there are there are territories you don't step in foolishly hmm. yes sir there are people who are trusting god to get properties and land and you go and you just they arrange all the people this one works in fcda this one is friend to the minister this one is friend to the president this one is friend to your destiny helper you insult all of them in one single statement who will beg who for you now you can be born again but you will not own a single property the bible says if you are going to war find out the arsenal you have first because wisdom can direct can i tell you this is the wisdom strategy that many believers do not have and they keep failing at a territorial level the bible says when you find out your enemy is greater than you this is not spiritual warfare this is what this is working in the cosmos make for peace immediately Are we learning the price of wisdom when uh, when um i think it was it was uh, pastor abu that was here and he was now commending and celebrating the chairman it was the wife and she said let's appreciate him and he said it's his birthday i said what wonderful people you see that for the man who owns this facility to come and participate that's already enough humility and an open-heartedness that he has come to receive to sit down quietly and they were wise enough to honor him the demon that we want to bring fight between two of them now has wasted his time you see i, I i'm saying this so that you will learn most preachers will say i'm a servant of god this is church and act in a way that will you can add five years of pain because of one day of foolishness what of people who return and insult their parents i'm a graduate i'm this and that and you insult your parents mama i'm no longer a child and all of that and she says all right what you have done to me i didn't go to school but may your children do it to you you say amen i don't care i'm the righteousness of god until you find out that by 50 your life is still looking like 25 and mama has gone to be with the lord it will take the mercy and the covenant of priesthood to deliver you from that cause there are many believers who keep acting in ignorance when i was going to start ministry i went and met my biological parents i was a man of god i was blessing them but i told them i said listen you people may i may have more revelation than you but you are my parents god is launching me i got down my knees i said both of you not just one it took two of you to bring me two of you put your hand on my head and speak blessings upon me there are many careless things believers do results don't just happen the realm of the spirit is a realm of order 
you don't violate ordinances and expect doors to keep opening i pray you value what is happening there are some of you here the wisdom key you need is that for as long as you've been looking at the man of god this is my pastor this is in fact my younger sister is his friend my elder brother you may never rise the wisdom key there you need is discernment who is this man what relationships does he have let me hurry up for time wisdom in proverbs chapter 8 when you read the entire proverbs chapter 8 he said by me kings reign and princes decree justice wisdom now with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness that those who love me they will eat the fruit thereof he said choose me than silver choose me than fine gold that when god was building in the beginning i was there wisdom is telling you i'm a master at building things when the earth was being made i was the architect behind it Please lay your hand on your head in one minute and cause the root of lack of wisdom. Pray in one minute that in the name of Jesus, every decision I have made as a result of lack of wisdom, tying down my productivity, tying down my advancement, in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. In this conference and in this service, I decree liberty. In the name of Jesus. Please be seated. Let's hurry up. Is someone's life changing? Hmm. Price number. Price number four. The price of diligence and productivity. The fourth price it takes for enlargement is the price of diligence. Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 23. In all labor there is profit. But the talk of the lips only tended to penury. In all labor there is profit. The labor of prayer, the labor of study. In all labor there is profit laziness is what both god and satan agree that is destructive if you're a lazy person both god and satan you will not be useful to any one of them because both of them require diligence are we together yes sir our world is full of lazy people who give excuses lazy people who give excuses proverbs chapter 12 We'll read verse 24 quickly and then 27. The hand of the diligent shall bear rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. 24. The hand of the diligent shall bear rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. Same chapter 27 now. Same chapter. The slothful man, listen, roasted not that which he took in hunting. Look at this kind of waste. That means a lazy man is a waster. You went and as far as killing the bush meat and you didn't roast it, so it decays. The slothful man does not roast that which he took in hunting. But the substance of the diligent grows. That's what it means by it's precious. That means a lazy man always leaves opportunities and anything he has unrefined. Because you see, when you kill the meat in this example, People will not just come and buy something dirty like that. You did not roast it and prepare it. The money comes when you package it. Is that true? You kill the bush meat, you dry it and do this. Then you can now charge for it. But for as long as it is in its raw state, it will waste. It says, but the substance of a diligent man is always precious. That means he adds value to it. Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 13 and 14. I just want scriptures to speak to you. Happy. Did I get that right?
happy is the man that findeth wisdom, the man that getteth understanding. That's what I'm looking for. Let's see 14. No, no. This is for wisdom. Proverbs 22. I meant to say verse 29. See it thou a man. Thank you. That's what I'm looking for. See it thou a man diligent in his business. His business there means everything that he's involved with. The Bible leaves him with an assurance that he shall stand before kings and he shall not stand before mean men. Shout it loud and clear. Say in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. I, decree I decree and declare that the spirit of diligence rests upon my life. I am productive. I am diligent. I am productive. I am diligent. Men reward me for my uniqueness. Turn it into a prayer in one minute. I decree and declare that I am diligent. Diligent, competent, excellent, exceptional. Hallelujah. Please sit down. God bless you. Let me show you a scripture that blessed me. One more scripture and we'll move to the next point. I hope you are not tired. 1 Kings 7, 13 and 14. 1 Kings 7. Now, King Solomon was building the temple. And he was looking for all of the men and the women who would be used to do certain things. And the Bible says King Solomon sent and fetched Hiram. This was a young man out of Tyre. Look at the, the background of this great one. I wondered why the Bible had to give us that information. Verse 14. He said he was a widow's. Say no excuses. No excuses. This boy was a widow's son of the tribe of Naphtali. The Bible says his father was a man of Tyre, a worker in brass, and he was filled with wisdom and understanding and cunning to work all works of brass. Say competence, say diligence, say excellence. The Bible says, and he came to King Solomon and wrought all his works. There are people that only serve kings. Their level of diligence makes it injustice for them to serve mean men. Can I tell you, be so outstanding that your only clients are kings. Don't just decide and say, I will serve mean men. By what qualification? Your competence is what upgrades you. There is a way you can sew someone's clothes that the person who you sew the clothes will not reach you again, not because he's afraid. That standard he knows I've not, I've not gotten here. He will call the helper that befits your standard to you. Can I tell you this? When you serve kings, you will remain in the palace. Let's hurry up. How many have I given you? Price number five. Now, the last three that I'm about to give you are maybe not more powerful, but they are very, very strategic. I'm giving you seven. I've given you four. Number five. Are you ready for this? The fifth price that you must pay if you want to break new grounds and enlarge is the price of spiritual warfare. Just two scriptures. And we'll jump. I'm not talking so much on that so that we can focus on 6 and 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 9. It is true that there are, there are demonic constructs that are sent by Satan to stand at the gate of your next level. And you must understand how to ward off the arsenals of darkness. Otherwise you will remain small. Read with me please. One to read. For a great door and effectual is opened unto me and there are many you can't truly be elijah till you know how to conquer jezebel you can't truly be gideon until you know how to destroy the idols that authorize the the adversaries to come and destroy you can't truly truly be jesus until you have the discernment to maneuver between the arsenals of satan 
directly confronting him after his fasting through peter and through judas there is nobody in scripture who became great who did not have a reason to ward off the arsenals of darkness you will not be an exception many believers are ignorant as to what to do to maintain their victory do you think do you actually think that satan will fold his arms and watch souls get saved through your life and watch lives transform mama do you think god will fold your arms and watch all your four daughters give birth to prophets that will change nations do you know when you are worshiping in church it's not only angels that are seeing you demons are hearing that sound of your commitment to heaven that lord i love you with everything when you are sowing they see you sowing any believer who does not understand spiritual warfare has signed up for limitation a few of you may have heard me say this in my teachings that years ago i was praying and i had a vision the ceiling in my room just disappeared and i saw this creature that just looked at me big eyes red and it was like the tail had another life of its own and it looked at me and was fuming with anger and fury and he said so you think you can bring god's people into abundance and the vision disappeared can i tell you there are people satan is not attacking not because they are not what is attack is because they've not done anything significant make no mistakes there are attacks that follow mantles there are attacks that they don't follow men they follow anointings the day god makes a declaration over your life satan is also a witness i have vowed that you will be the one to raise everybody in your family and they hear it why do you think the spirit of the antichrist kept moving through the scribes and pharisees to ask who jesus was what were they looking for they came to john and he said are you that one john said i'm the voice he said what confusion is this that's why in anger they killed him you see that the anger of herodias it was not about dancing and head it was a vendetta for playing games with us they removed his head there was something john knew that kept him strong there was something he lost and he paid for it just because he was a prophet if john were to be killed the active part of his ministry should even be when they killed him nobody could touch him there was something he knew offense came in and that offense gave room for many other things and look how miserable a prophet died nope he would stand and look at the same people who killed him you brood of vipers and insult them and nobody could touch him there was immunity that understanding gave him but offense came go and ask jesus are you the messiah or should we expect another and in that that pain and that offense he destroyed and wasted his life number let me give us one more scripture just write for reference in luke chapter 8 from verse 22 to 28 let me just look at two or three scriptures there luke chapter 8 from verse 22 and now i am i'm i'm interested in just one verse 22 but the whole story is from 22 to 28 remember the story about the wind and the storm they were going to gadara i'm just going to talk on 22 it came to pass on a certain day that he went out into the ship with his disciples the he being jesus and he said unto them let us go on to the other side say the other side, the other side. that other side you want to go to is not empty that other side you desire to go to when jesus said let's go to the other side demons had it the other side means the salvation of 10 cities the other side meant the deliverance of a man who had been under captivity the other side meant giving an opportunity for a city to experience jesus and the bible says and they launched forth suddenly there was a storm of wind that's what the bible calls it a storm is made up of two things the wind and the water the water is the one you can see but that water is powered by the wind you cannot see if you want to calm storms the spiritual principle is rebuke the wind 
and the water if you focus on the water you are wasting your time the water is a victim of the wind every physical problem you see is powered by a wind the water is just the one you see the trouble in your office the trouble in your marriage but all of that is powered by the wind jesus rebuked the wind and the sea was calm so for as long as you are just quarreling husband and wife you are just beating your children no there is a wind you don't try to calm the water but how do you use your hand to calm water it is the wind and the water will come for someone you just got a key now that you do not judge things just from the physical appearance what is this attack around my ministry destiny helpers are just living and being misrepresented that is water always know that a storm is made of two things wind and water learn from jesus how he calmed the storm is how we calm our storms rebuke the wind all of a sudden a, a prophetic word comes that god is promoting you in office and everybody all your superiors it looks like a coordinated attack they are finding faults in you for some reason money is missing in the bank all kinds of things are happening arguing physically is like using your hand to calm water it's a total waste of time you know what to do now go to the wind he says shalom peace be still by the time he got to the other side he now met what he was calling the wind they were the demons that were in the man in gadara they knew he was coming to them they knew that in saving that man you would save 10 cities and they started troubling the water satan does not fight you for you he fights you for what you will do elizabeth if he fights your barrenness it is not because of your womb it is because of john the baptist who will honor and who will baptize jesus who will save the world satan is very long term in his approach he does not fight you for you he's known that your third child will become a prophet who will deliver many and so he will even stop the barrenness from the first one at best he will give you two children but that third one he will fight it because there is prophecy on him can I tell you, believers must understand the art of scriptural, the scriptural art of warfare. Hmm. A ministry does not just rise and thrive. You ask your pastor and his wife, they will tell you, they will tell you things that they have done, mysteries they have engaged as touching, securing all of this. You think, I tell you the truth, look, if you do not understand warfare, just register this in your mind. You will not last. Not in today's world. Not, not as far as impact is concerned. Number six. Are you ready for the sixth prize? Prize number six is the power of relationships. You want to move to the other side. You must understand the power of relationships. I call it the ministry of destiny helpers. Matthew chapter 4 from verse 18 and 19. Matthew 4, 18 and 19. Matthew 4. <laughs> And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. Here was his proposition to them, 19. And he said unto them, instruction number one, follow me. Everybody say, follow me. Follow me, follow me means join yourself to me follow me means believe and walk in my ideologies follow me means open your heart to my influence and i will make you forget about becoming fishers of men the way you become is to follow me leave me to do the making relationships are powerful in this kingdom you've heard me say it who hates you does not matter but who likes you matters Vashti, the king hates you one day and you stop becoming queen. 
As simple as that. Hadassah, the king loves you one moment and you become queen. Joseph, the king loves you one moment and you become prime minister. What sort of injustice is that? Just because someone becomes endearing towards you, your life can change. Yes, sir. Is it not because God so loved the world that he gave? There is a relationship between love and giving. When people love you, they give. Money is not the only thing they give. They share their influence. They share their honor. They share their credibility. Nobody rises beyond a certain threshold in isolation. This is a world where interdependence is the law of growth. Even biologically speaking. You see that now. Procreation happens because a husband and his wife it is their meeting together that brings children. Don't tell me you want to rise. Show me what you are uniting yourself with. And I can predict your future. Are we together? Very, very powerful. Follow me and I will make you. In Acts chapter 4 and verse 12. Acts chapter 4 and verse 12. When they saw the mighty works that were done by Peter, they were amazed because they knew this man. A few years ago, they were fishermen. Four years ago, what is suddenly changed now? He rounds up his, his message by saying this. After the man at Gate Beautiful had been healed and the council called him to defend, to find out by what power or what name that miracle had come. Neither is there salvation in any other, he said. For there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Next verse. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled, and they took knowledge of them. Help me finish the reading. That they had been So I look at you by January and I know financially you are not doing well. And by April, I'm seeing what you are doing. I'm seeing what you are buying as a seed for the church. I have a right to ask you. That level of speed is not what you are doing. Is who have you joined yourself with? Look at this. If by next week, if by next week, I may be so for you in Jesus' name. Amen. But let's say by next week, one of our uh brothers here who, who maybe is just starting god is helping him by next week he just comes to say pastor i want to give this church a property of so 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 acres the first thing you are going to ask him is where did you go to not what did you do that kind of result is not about what you have done again where did you that means who did you meet and he will tell you i used to have an uncle god just lifted this man he became this and that and that and he called me ah is there any man in the house of saul that i may show kindness for jonathan's sake who likes you matters this is our world where we say it doesn't matter who likes me if you are saying that to honor jesus congratulations but if you are saying that to despise men welcome to the world where pain will be a teacher for you for a very long time because in this world of men believe me when i tell you who likes you matters dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny Alaska de Bashka na kata branda kete kotos kete branda kata pa kotos koto preke teke ne kata. The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.